Hello and welcome to the video. This is a gentle reminder about something that's just happened to me and if you're coming into your flying season, uh, hopefully it will help you avoid the mistake that I've just made. Now I've been flying the same AR Wing Pro since the summer of 2020. I was involved in the creation and the design of the AR Wing Pro and it's a very capable model. Now my original one has been through loads of different crashes, it has been put together with black tape and hot glue and it became my test rig. A little bit of a Frankenstein's monster. I included things like the run cam split HD was put on it for those tests. And after many months of loyal service, a uh, week or two ago, it finally took one crash too many. The final nail in the coffin was a stall when flying into choppy winds, and I dropped behind the trees, and that headwind disappeared, and the thing just stalled, and I couldn't, couldn't recover it in time, and it went nose in. Now, to get the centre of gravity right on the AR Wing Pro, you need a quite a decent amount of weight in the nose, that's the way it's designed. So something like a 4S 2P lithium ion battery and a GoPro in the nose and it's fine. So when it went in there was quite a bit of energy and bits of foam went everywhere. The nose snapped off, the motor mount was floating free, the motor and ESC cables came undone, the DJI Air unit was still attached to the bay canopy but only attached to the rest of the model by the cable holding it on to the camera. So I collected everything up as best I could and then when I got back and tried to put it all together I realised that there was a couple of little bits of foam that had disappeared in the crash that I was never going to find again. So I thought you know what it's time to pull all the electronics out of here and go and put them in some new foam and I did have this Isheen version of the AR Wing Pro which is a white one which I thought that's a bit of a difference and also for some of the chase stuff that I'm doing with some of my friends with quads a white wing will be easier to see so let's put everything in here. So I moved it all into the white wing, installed it and made some changes from that original setup having flown that one for nearly two years. So for example you can see here that I've put the air unit in this piece at the side, I've added extra cooling and that means then if the bay does the battery cover does come off um, it isn't going to destroy the air unit or pull the cable out the back of the camera and I've changed a few things around as well I've also put a mount on the front for the run cam peanut too now unfortunately when I put all the electronics back in I did have to do some fixing some of the pins were bent on the flight controller I started to work my way through everything to make sure that everything was okay and I was being quite methodical until I got to the part where I was testing the DJI HD system. That seemed to be fine, the S bus outputs were all working, the image was fine, but crucially the on-screen display that's created from the flight controller into the goggles was not being displayed. Everything else was working fine and I couldn't understand why that was. So I wondered if it was something to do with the split HD being damaged in the crash. So I swapped over the camera, that didn't make any difference. Swapped over cables, that didn't make any difference. Made sure the iNav settings were all right for the MSP on-screen display in the DJI system. That was all okay. And in the end, after about a day of trying different things, I pulled an air unit, a new air unit, out of a bag and plugged it into the flight controller here on the model and surprise surprise the on-screen display worked. So it's something to do with this particular air unit. So I then went onto the DJI website, I ordered a new air unit just with this little piece here, that's £100 and then waited a couple of days for that to arrive. When it finally arrived I plugged it all together, uh, then had to of course plug it into the PC, I had to activate it, check the firmware, then bind it to my FPV um, controller through the goggles, then go through and check all the stuff was working with SBUS, and I could see all the controls working in iNav, and fantastically, my on-screen display was back, which was perfect. So, £100 later, off to the field I went now checks at the field were fine, uh, the GPS locked up after a minute or two, the controls moved correctly, I had a little bit of reflex set in there, uh, everything looked great. I enabled auto launch and threw it and it nosed straight into the ground at full throttle and broke the folding props. So I have to order two more of those 
from Ben up at 3DXR and they're on their way. Do you know where I went wrong? Well, it was a silly mistake. I failed to complete my bench checks as I got sucked into the issue with the DJI Air unit, the on-screen display not working, and spent several days on that, and that unfortunately meant I kind of got distracted and forgot to go back and check that the motor to ESC connections were right. If you remember at the beginning, the motor and the ESC were pulled apart. Unfortunately, those weren't uh, set up in a way or marked so I didn't know which way to put them together annoyingly looking back I remembered when I thought about this I was thinking oh I need to check that that motor's the right way around because there's a 50 50 chance when you plug a motor into an ESC that you're going to have it turning the right way and the law of sod I got it the wrong way around and then because I got so distracted I forgot to go back and check so what's the lesson in all of this well, the lesson is when building or repairing any kind of model like this, do not allow yourself to be distracted from the correct process of commissioning and testing everything's working just because you get into a nasty problem that you've not seen before that takes you a day or two to fix. From here on in, I'm going to have a little pad on the desk and I'm going to make notes as I go through, as things occur to me of things I need to check, that they are written down on that pad and then I won't go to the field until I've crossed everything off. So, I've reminded you, so you can't blame me if this happens to you this season. Hopefully, it's a nice gentle reminder that when you are fixing stuff, don't just get distracted by the big stuff when you think it's all ready. Go through a full commission check. Make sure the control surfaces are moving okay. Make sure everything is tight. Your fail safe is fine. And also your props turning in the right direction. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.